Windows 10 is gone. It's not coming back. It's gone. Got to go over to Windows 11. You don't. You really don't have to go over to Windows 11. We have a solution in today's video for you. It's called Windows 10 LTSC. And in fact, there's two versions of it. There's 2021 Enterprise, then there's 2021 IoT Enterprise. Now, both of these carry additional longer support than this 2025 October 10 end date. In fact, the regular Enterprise is going to be supported until 2027. And then the IoT version is going to be supported somewhere till apparently 2032, making it extremely viable for those who want to sort of not risk getting any more telemetry with what we kind of know as Windows 12 that's upcoming. Now in today's video, we are going to show you where you can get Windows 10 IoT from the actual ISO, how you can make it with Rufus, and I'll put the links for these programs in the description below. But also today's video is sponsored by VIP S City Keys, which is a channel sponsor here at Tech S City. I'll put the link down in the description below too. But basically, VIP S City Keys has you covered for both Windows 2021 LTSC as well as 2019 LTSC if you want to go back to an even older version of Windows 10. Now, I do recommend the 2021 version, especially if you're a gamer, because there's the biggest difference here is it has GPU hardware accelerated scheduling. And this essentially allows you to use things like frame generation or with AMD's case, FSR 3 and 4. And it can also help improve FPS with some of the latest games. Now, the best news is one of these keys will only set you back $10 or just a little bit under that with using the link in the description below and the coupon code TYC. You'll get a big juicy discount if you do that. And then on checkout, they've got different payment options. But once you finish paying, you'll get your key auto delivered instantly. And then you can copy that and then just paste it into your computer if you're on that same computer, or you can just manually put it in when you go to install Windows 10 Enterprise. So I'll put some links in the description below for that. They've also got Windows 11 Home and Pro and things like that, where you can also get a big discount too, if you feel like you wanna go over to Windows 11. However, that said, I do prefer Windows 10 personally. I'm a big fan of it. I've tried Windows 11. And in my experience, Windows 10 is just a more responsive OS. But the best thing, and we'll go through the advantages with Windows 10 right now, the Enterprise Edition, is that you don't get any new features. And this can be a good or a bad thing, but I'll actually put up the list of the things that you don't get included with Windows 10 Enterprise. For instance, you don't get shoehorned the weather and news updates, you don't get shoehorned into using Cortana, and also you don't get shoehorned into using the Copilot AI, which when I was using Windows 10 Pro, even on my benchmark rig for benchmarking games for you guys, I was surprised to see that there are suddenly these new things that come up, when, especially when I'm installing a new <laughs> benchmark PC and setting it up, just like out of nowhere, Here's this thing that you didn't ask for. So Windows 10 Enterprise essentially encapsulates that version of Windows, which in this case, it's 2021 H2 update, and you won't get any more things just slammed in your face. And for me personally, this is a really good thing as a Windows 10 user because I'm used to a certain thing, especially for a work PC, and I don't want any changes to disrupt my workflow. I know in the past, updates have caused issues with my video editing software and things like that. So that's one thing and one big benefit in my opinion with 10 enterprises is basically what you install is what you get. Now you also don't get the Microsoft Store included, which for me personally is actually a big benefit. Some people may need it. However, I'll put a link in the description below on how to install this on Enterprise. But you've also got the old calculator, which I personally prefer. And then you've got no photo viewer installed. And to get around this, I personally just use Internet Explorer, the base edition, which is included with the Enterprise Edition. And what I didn't realize is, especially when I'm viewing all these different graphs, I've then got all the tabs open and I can quickly toggle between different uh, photos with ease. And so you guys may or may not have noticed, I've been actually making a lot less mistakes with my benchmark videos lately because I've been able just to run through them in sort of like quick succession, one tab after the other. And that's because I've been on Enterprise. I mean, you can do this on Windows 10 Pro as well. It's just that Photo Viewer doesn't exist on Enterprise. 
And also another thing with 21 Enterprise is Windows game mode doesn't work out of the box properly. You do have to get the Microsoft Store to make it function properly. However, since I don't use Microsoft Store and I don't use game mode, I just turn off game mode. But more on the optimizations later, let's get on to probably the biggest caveat of LTSC Windows 10, at least versus Windows 10 Pro 22H2. And that would be the actual FPS performance of, in particular, the 9950X3D. And here's where we've done some benchmarking here. Just gonna show you guys a few graphs of the FPS performance. Now, I'm not even gonna include the 4K numbers because they're virtually the same across all the games here. And this was the case with my Windows 10 versus Windows 11 video that we recently did. And what we got here for the Windows 10 Enterprise, the biggest difference was with the 9950X3D. Now this is essentially eight Vcash 9800X3D cores and then eight 9700X cores to couple together to make a 16 core asymmetrical for sort of productivity and gaming as a hybrid CPU. Now with the latest scheduler updates on both 22H2 and 24H2, with Windows 11, it does a fantastic job of managing the CPU automatically. And this is also the case if you've got a 7950X3D. So these two CPUs in particular, as well as the 9900X3D, as well as the 7900X3D, they're not really recommended for LTSC, except if you're willing to use a program like Project Lasso. And so here's where I'm gonna show you guys the benchmarks of Enterprise versus Windows 10 Pro, which for Windows 10 Pro, it previously won out the benchmarking session that we did. Now let's quickly go through some of these numbers, some of the weirdest things with the gaming FPS numbers, because it's probably a big thing on your mind. And we'll start off with Counter-Strike 2. We lost a bit of FPS on the 9800X3D. However, the 9950X3D you'll see here, it lost quite a significant amount of FPS because it's jumping over to the non-X3D cores. Now setting core affinity, which is gonna be like Project Lasso, will bring back some of this FPS, but you're still gonna be leaving a little bit behind. In other words, the latest Windows 10 and 11 updates are doing something not just with the core affinity, but it's also optimizing the Ryzen CPUs as best as they can for gaming. Now for Marvel Rivals, this actually seems to be relatively untouched. The FPS was virtually the same on both CPUs at 1080p. Then moving on to Fortnite, we did see a significant drop on both sides. Moving on to Rift Breaker, here is where we've got the actual opposite effect where Enterprise did phenomenally well. And this was really shocking, especially when I set manual project lasso and this, I believe, has to be the Achilles heel of the latest scheduler update on both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Sort of like these old games that haven't really been updated. There's something going on here and I can't put my finger on it. But at the same time, trying to figure out the exact reason why, I could be here for days trying to figure it out and still be at square one. Which is why if someone else knows the answer as to why Enterprise in this particular benchmark is performing so much better, then I'd love to hear your answer in the comments section below. Then they move on to Baldur's Gate 3. Here's where we actually saw a victory for the 9800X3D. Then for the 9950X3D, a loss on default settings, and then a little bit of a loss with the uh, core affinity set manually. Then onto the last title here, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. A little bit of a drop in FPS for the 9800X3D, but then able to claw back a bit of that FPS with manual core affinity set. So the gaming results are a bit of a mixed bag, but as we said before, looking at those numbers, if you are on the 9950X3D or the 16 or 12 core X3D variants, then I would recommend at the very least going with Project Lasso. I'll put the link in the description below for that too. Though at this stage you're like, Brian, I don't want to install Project Lasso. I've got a 16 core X3D. I just want to stay on Windows 10 Pro. Here's where Microsoft apparently is going to extend support past 2025 October with a program that's going to cost you around $30 per year. So that'll give you the security updates, but apparently they're just gonna stop any feature updates and things like that. So you will still be able to use Windows 10 Pro. It's just gonna cost you money and it's probably gonna have some annoyances somewhere along the lines, which is why I'm doing today's video, just saying to go with Enterprise, which is what I've actually been doing for the past couple of months. So here's where we're gonna quickly go onto the good stuff here. I decided to test the productivity numbers in Enterprise and here's where they ended up being better than both Windows 10 Pro and Windows 11 Pro for the testing that we did. So you do get a little bit of a boost in productivity, and this is simply because the OS is so lightweight out of the box to begin with, that when you're maxing all the cores, it doesn't matter how you max them, you're maxing all the cores and threads anyway. So you're gonna get a little bit of boost here for productivity, at least for the 9950X3D. Anyhow guys, at this point in the video, it's time to quickly show you if you don't know how to do this bit, if you know how to do this bit already, you probably wanna skip this bit, 
but this is how to install Windows 10 LTSC. Basically, it's a very simple process. I'll put that link in the description below. You just go click on it, download that ISO, and then once you've got that ISO for the IoT Enterprise version, you don't have to really care so much if you only have a key for Enterprise and not IoT and vice versa, because when you enter that key to activate Windows, for example, it'll then change to that particular version of Windows 10 Enterprise. So they're interchangeable in that sense. But once you download this, you can then get a program called Rufus and make sure you've got a USB stick that's eight gigabytes or larger, and then you put that into your PC, open up Rufus, and then just click open and find that ISO. And then Rufus will pretty much do the rest for you. You click on make the image file there. It might take 10, 20 minutes, but once it's done, you've now essentially got yourself a bootable version of Windows 10 Enterprise. Now I do recommend personally a complete fresh install here. Here's where you wanna back up your really important files or just use a different drive altogether and keep your old OS drive hanging around somewhere where you can copy the files back and forth when you need them. But once you're done here, make sure you unplug your other drives. I only like to install Windows on a single drive installed into the computer to avoid any problems with uh, boot sectors going off the main OS drive itself. It can be a very annoying thing. I've run into this in the past, but I like to have that only drive installed when I'm installing Windows itself. And then after that process is done, we install Windows, we go click on all the next buttons here. And then after we've done all that, we should be in Windows ready to tweak this thing right up. Now, if you've installed your USB drive and you can't get Windows just to boot up automatically, then you may have to go into the BIOS by hitting F2 or delete on your keyboard, and then just going over to the last tab in the BIOS itself and just manually clicking on boot override and selecting that USB drive that you just inserted. So now once Windows 10 Enterprise is all installed, it's time to tune this thing up, at least if you wanna tune things up like I do. I go pretty hardcore when it comes to tuning Windows 10 LTSC, especially out of the box. There's just mainly a lot of the things that I've done in my previous Windows 10 tune-up sessions, I do in this as well. For instance, I disable uh, connected users and telemetry, as well as disabling distributed link tracking client. But keep in mind, apparently GTA 5 users have said you need this service running, but I don't really play GTA 5 nowadays. I'm actually looking forward to GTA 6 personally. But then we go on to going through the privacy settings. Here's where I'm just going to show you guys up on the screen all the settings that I disable and I keep off personally. And it's also really just uh, going into certain uh, services that could be running and leaving these things off. So it's just a potential hiccup that could happen later on if I've got that service running. It could interrupt things like 0.1% uh, lows when I'm gaming, for instance. So basically in a nutshell, any services that I don't need on my computer, I don't have them running. So this is basically a tune up of, I'll just show you on the screen, all the things that I'm doing personally here. Feel free to pause at any moment in the video and then you can just copy the settings that I've got here. But as we said before, I also do disable the game mode and the game bar settings too. And one thing that's important with what I do personally with my 10 Enterprise is I install the K-Lite codec pack over say something like VLC. Now people may be wondering, uh, the K-Lite codec pack is pretty dangerous. This is actually one of those things for me personally where I need the K-Lite codec pack personally over the VLC. And the biggest difference here is actually seeing the icons for the video files properly on my desktop when I'm doing my work. Uh, with the VLC, I found it doesn't install anything extra. So some of the video files that uh, won't get thumbnails, they'll just be video files. And so if I'm shooting B-roll and I wanna quickly add that into a project that I'm editing for a video, I don't know what footage that is. At least with the thumbnail, I've got an idea of what uh, footage I've just shot and I can drop that into my uh, video editing program and just make things super crisp and super easy. So basically when it comes to tuning, hopefully the footage has helped you optimize things. I'll also put a link up here to everything I do in Windows 10. To It's basically a similar process. Though keep in mind, everything that I'm tuning up here is also reversible as well. So if you do come into problems, you can reverse some of these steps. If say for instance, an app's not working properly or a, a program is not functioning right, you can go back and then just uh, take back some of these settings. So basically everything I do in my tuning for Windows 10 is all reversible. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, once you've set up Windows 2021 LTSC Enterprise, you are gonna be in for one snappy experience, especially after you tune it all up to your liking. I just found it's absolutely phenomenal 
in terms of its responsiveness. I've been using it on my main system now for a few months and I can heavily recommend it. I haven't come into really any issues outside of the NVIDIA app, which that's the NVIDIA app itself. It's causing weird driver issues. People have reported black screens and things like that. And this is not just on Windows 10, it's on actually Windows 11. Every OS is having these issues with the new RTX 5000 series. And I think it's mainly due to the NVIDIA app. And I've critiqued NVIDIA about this before in the past. So I'm having those issues right now. I personally just want to get the GeForce experience back because I never really had any problems with that. And I could do a single hotkey to get my shadow play working. So that's the convenience of having the GeForce experience. So I've been sort of asking NVIDIA, can you get the GeForce experience back? But that's my only complaint I've got so far, and that's got nothing to do with Enterprise itself. Also, some other things you may wish to do is some power profile tuning. I do personally do this on my rig with the NVMe settings, but also you may be wondering what if I've got a 12900K or a 13th or 14th gen CPU? then you may wish to get Windows 11 in that case, uh, Windows 11, especially LTSC. A lot of people have been asking for that guide. So I'm going to check out LTSC in a separate video and then come back to you guys and tell you how I'd tune that up personally and do a sort of like a similar scenario to what we've done here today. But keep in mind, the 12900K as well as the 13900K and 4900K, I'm not too sure about the 285K in particular, but they've got this thing called the Intel Thread Director. It's a microcontroller on the chip, which is designed to work better with Windows 11. However, that said, Windows 10, even the 21H2 scheduler, which is on Enterprise, it works absolutely fine because it was designed to work with that big little structure. And so it does prioritize things, especially with the clock discrepancy between a 14900K's performance scores and its E cores, for instance. It's able to quickly prioritize things actually fine. So you shouldn't really come into any issues if you are using a 13900K, for instance, an i9 on Windows 10. It's just personally, Windows 11 does do a slightly better job, especially for gaming FPS. But I've found Windows 11 itself, the inherent drawbacks of just a sluggish OS experience has made it so it's very frustrating for me when I'm trying to do my work and I just remember things being a lot quicker, not just in the responsive side of things, but also when I'm dragging and dropping certain things and just in general, a much better OS experience on Windows 10. Not to mention when it comes to gaming, if we're looking at the latest scheduler versus the latest schedule on Windows 11 versus 10, we've got a big gap there in some games for Windows 10 Pro. So I'll put the link to that video up here if you want to check out the direct comparison between 11 and uh, 10 Pro for gaming FPS, especially on the latest two CPUs that we talked about here today. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, final thoughts and opinions here. Enterprise, absolutely amazing. Been loving my experience so far. You don't need to worry about security updates for another couple of years at best. And I'll also put some links in the description below where you can get one of the keys to activate this version of the OS for insanely cheap from today's video sponsor, VIP SCD Keys. And with that aside, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Also, if you're wondering, I'm wearing these shades because allergies in Japan right now, man, it's it's insane. Like there's this sugi allergy and it just, the stuff hits my eyes and it just makes my eyes so itchy. So I'd rather not show you guys a pair of like eyes that look like I've been chronically smoking something for hours straight and haven't hydrated. So <laughs> we're just going with these sunnies for today. Anyhow, catch you in the next one.